You're watching On Approach. This is episode 19, The Go Around. Hello, Captain. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show. Uh, this is our first go around. Uh, what is a go around, you ask? Well, when a topic is just too big to cover in a standard weekly show of On Approach, uh, we're going to call a go around. And what that will do is get us into a dedicated show where we explore one topic and one topic only for as long as it takes to get all our collective thoughts out into the universe in a completely unfiltered way. Uh, on being unfiltered, if you got kids, send them out of the fucking room. Uh, this is very much like every person's individual opinion. It doesn't stand for the Sky Lounge as a whole. It doesn't stand for any organization. These are individuals giving their opinions. Uh, that said, I'd love to welcome our special guest on this episode. We've got Mr. Jordan King. Welcome, sir. Hey, everybody. Thanks for having me. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. Uh, We've got Mr. Mark, a.k.a. Spark Smudge. Hello. And Mr. Kevin, a.k.a. Live Sparks, right there. What's up? Mr. Brian, bcrawly57. Good morning. Hello, everybody. And over on the other side, over there, Mr. Ken, a.k.a. My Noodle is Caramel. Hello. All right, here we go. Who's going to kick us off? That would be me. That guy. <laughs> That'll okay. be you. Okay. Go That'll for it, Mr. Sparks. What are you thinking? So we saw we saw the the Twitch live stream. We've seen a couple videos already hit YouTube, and more than anything, we've seen all the rage on the internet. Which is, we'll just call it the internet as a whole. Uh, yes. What are your uh, thoughts? I'm going to start off quite positive. Um, love the format. Um, really excited about the product. I have to say it's. Um, from uh, my initial my initial f uh, look on it, it looked very much explaining I have to say uh, the, 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 the the graphical styling but uh, as on a whole I am I am I'm very positive I want this this uh, product to succeed I really do I do know the company I do have their other products or one of their other products I don't have their fishing one I'm looking into that one <laughs> but that's another subject. <laughs> Would that be more exciting than the train one? No, I do have the train sim. I'm a, I'm a nerd. Come on, yes. I have the yes. train sim. And what I did find, uh, I didn't see yesterday because I didn't really touch on the interface and the, uh, the the background. You know, outside of the sim, if you know what I mean. Mr. King did on his video, which I, I watched previously and uh, I was very impressed on how clean it looked and how simple it was uh, I like simple I don't like complex menus and millions of tabs I do pick up on mr. King saying yeah there's a couple of things we could have some advanced options I agree 100% but I love the way they kept it clean and simple I want to fly this plane I want this route let's go simple clean I think that's the market, uh, right? Like that's that's got to yes. be the market. I mean, they're not. I don't yes. think they're going for the super nerds. I no, mean, look, we no, are nerds, right? Like for the entry level people. They're, I mean, this is a step up from their flight school. I mean, literally, it is it, it's a flight sim with flight school built in. It's 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 very simple based. They don't want to complicate it overly overly complicate it. If you know what I mean. Which I'm happy with. I'm good. I'm I'm good with that. Um, I do have a lot of reserves, though. I mean, uh, from the videos I've seen, uh, like it what? It didn't excite me. It didn't excite me. The product uh, or the, the videos? The product. The product didn't excite me. It didn't yeah. say this is the new greatest big thing. This is going to blow X plane out of the water. This is going to blow P3D out of the water. This is going to, they're going to be the, the, the best thing since like, but it did in all, not. Do in that. all fairness, do you think that some of that was production though? When you think about it, right? Like let's, let, let's, let's break it down this way. You saw dovetails production in the Twitch stream, right? Yes. <laughs> You saw, Pretty you saw bad. of the same product and basically showcasing and introducing to the world the same thing. 
Uh, I showed you, you nothing. You, right. You you saw you saw Mr. King's video on YouTube, right? Yes. So production value definitely can add a lot to a product. Absolutely. Right? I thought Mr. King's video should have been their promo video because <laughs> yeah. they detailed a lot more than they did. Their video yeah. showed you absolutely nothing. It showed you eye candy, and that was it. It was a fucking slideshow. It was a goddamn exactly. PowerPoint running there. Three, three, three photos that all looked like X-Plane. If you'd have put X-Plane 11 <laughs> in the bottom left-hand corner, you wouldn't have known the difference. <laughs> am, I too, too, am I not wrong? No, you're not wrong at all. I had to, I had to agree with that one. That, that was... Uh not very well done considering it's a new ip and you're coming out with a an announcement like this in a live format you should have more than what you presented so uh, i was pretty disappointed with that myself that mm -hmm. was that was subpar at best so that presentation was was pretty it was pretty weak to be honest i mean like i felt like the hosts weren't really connecting with people I felt like actually, uh, um, look, what's, what's his name? Look at his name here. The, uh, the the executive producer Steve Stephen Hood. He was really good. I liked what he had to say. I thought he was very positive and straightforward. You know, I know it was very scripted. I mean, they were definitely reading off a script there. I mean, but he yeah, totally. he was he seemed more passionate. He seemed to be more into it than the other guy uh chris uh um to me he was zoned out he, he was, was he was completely staring zoned out, into bro. space <clears throat> he, was, he was staring into space he, yeah. he he just was not engaging at all yeah and, and i think it, it showed poorly from a from a yeah. from a presentation point of view to to present a product and and say, look, this is what we've got. This is what's coming. I was watching that, and I was just like, "What is this?" <laughs> yeah, I have just that is not going to make me go out and buy their product. I didn't I'm think sorry. it could be as bad as the first presentation that they did. The yeah, live stream. Amy in the first presentation. That was, was so awkward. awkward. But I would have preferred to have Amy back on this one. It would have yeah. been because she yeah. went to fight some country. She does she did, she did some social. She she's passionate. People. Yeah, she should have been there. Should have been the one. I think. This I point. think one of the problems is they shouldn't have that chat running. You know, you got five hundred and fifty guys watching this on, on stream, and they're all putting a load of shit into the chat, and it distracts you. <laughs> yeah. I was, mm. I was probably reading that more than I was watching the guys. To be honest, I closed a lot it. Of the stuff they put is funny, but I closed they the need chat. To, oh, it annoyed yeah. me. <laughs> they need to bend that. You know, yeah, because they weren't responding well, to the chat until but on the very that end, point, anyway. But on that point, when they were doing their presentation and they got to the Q&A and they said, let's take some, some questions from the chat, not one question was read from the chat. So I actually, it was, I, not, it was not, hold on, hold on. Oh, good. It, was, it, was, it, was, it was not said to be from the chat. It was, it was you had to send in your question oh, early the week prior and they would what? take from that, they would take uh, from that. The questions, except they probably did not take from that, and they answered their own freaking question. Yeah, that was good. pretty. So it was definitely a scripted path of questions. I did not know that. That's oh, pretty yeah. shitty. That's mm -hmm. pretty shitty move to do. That you're saying that you're you're taking questions from the chat, and not one question from the live chat. They was did take one. Mentioned. The FSU the, the, the on PC. PC. Yeah, FSU. But, yeah, but, 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 but that was by coincidence. Oh, God. Guys, guys, real quickly, I, I would just yeah. caution some, some, uh, I guess, some neutrality here. Are we sure that there's this conspiracy to set up pre-scripted questions before these um, live streams? It well, seems like sure it. That? I mean, I, 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 I understand the optics, right? And by no means do I give a damn either, either way. But I'm just so saying. I I feel like I did see some questions being acknowledged, especially if you looked at the moderator was replying to people's questions directly in the chat. So I guess I just struggle mm. to say that Dovetail Games completely disavowed any sort of, you know, responses in the uh, in the chat because I saw them actively uh, engaging with the chat room. They were. I'm going to I'm going to re <laughs> retort slightly here. I'm going to say this: when I was watching this, it came across to me. As scripted 
from start to yeah, finish. And, and, and people it call that out, not, right? It, it came across that way. Yeah, when, when you take a people question publicly... Somebody said, does this seem pre-recorded? Which, which I'm not going to lie. At first, I thought it did, too. I mean, I, as soon as they said that, I was looking at it and kind of yeah. going, wait hmm. a minute, wait a minute. Right, but right, then, right. But then they broke it and said, no, you know, we're really just here. So, yeah, of course. And what I would say is that I heard, um, I think it was Kevin bring up Amy. And I agree, right? So we have not really heard from Dovetail Games in this kind of forum for a while. It's been like, what, probably a year? <sighs> at Nearly. least. Yeah, so it was, it's, I mean, since flight school, really, right? So which, that was about a year ago. So mm -hmm. Stephen Hood, without a doubt, I did an interview with him a little bit more than a year ago. He is, without a doubt, very passionate. And it sucked because when I first talked to him, all this stuff was well more than a year out. So, of course, people thought that he was just kind of, you know, blowing smoke. But now you see some of his ideas start to come to fruition. He wasn't lying when he said he wanted to increase, you know, uh, atmospheric effects and things of the sort. You know, Martin, he moved on to some other job, I guess. I don't even know exactly what happened to him. And then Amy, I don't even know what she's doing either. But this new guy that you guys are talking about is Chris. I have only maybe said a couple of words to him um, before I came up with this video. But I do know that he's new. And yeah, he was probably a little bit more scripted than he should have been. Because I have to admit, it's, it, it did seem very plastic when it started. But, you know, I, I don't know if I would go as far as to say that they were... Uh, you know, completely scripting out all of their responses. Not necessarily well, saying think... it's not factual, right? Like my thing was, I was gonna, I was gonna say uh, it would be brilliant if somebody actually fact checked it, right? Like look through the yeah. chat logs because there are sites that will document an entire Twitch log and go through and like fucking straight up fact check it, right? Like did this question show up and was it answered immediately after or soon thereafter or whatever? But what yeah. what caught me off guard was if I take a question from somebody, I'm probably gonna drop their name too. Right, it builds a connection yeah. as as a as a host when somebody asks you something and it's then answered, you know, uh, somewhat later, or whatever. You you build that connection. You say, you know, we're gonna this question is is is, is by so and so um, who asks blah blah blah, and then you answer it. I mean, maybe it's just bad a, a bad approach, <laughs> right? You're right. Yeah. No, and and, and I agree. So clearly, we know yeah. that there are a couple of tech companies that struggle to connect with their users. And I would not say that today's live stream, and not that. I, and once again, I, it's really of zero interest to me how the hell their live streams go. But I agree. I thought it was a relatively poor live stream. But you know, they they got to learn. There's this Chris guy. It's the first time we ever seen him on camera. It's um, only the second time we've seen Steven. I mean, yeah, clearly he's got to learn, and hopefully they learn from the debacle <clears throat> it was today. So that's all I can say. My Amy was friend. direct. Amy was directly answering questions in the chat. She yeah. she had the name Dovetail Games, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And she was she was addressing the individuals when she answered the questions, and she was doing that quite frequently. I I personally, uh, the way I saw the chat going and the crap that was going on, I just closed it because um, <laughs> yeah. it was just ridiculous. I it, think a lot of people uh, did. There was too many basically fucking kitty shit going on in there. And, uh, you know, as much as I was hoping to see um, some rational and, and well thought out uh, questions, I really wasn't seeing that. So I just closed it because it was just trash. Um as far as my bit, as far as a community rep, I'm sorry. It is imperative that you have a community rep who is going to be passionate about the product because you are the face, in essence, of a new IP, period. And if you're not going to come out with passion and, and really engage with the chat, you've already started to turn me off already. I've seen one too many developers over the years. They do these community things. And a lot of them initially will fail because they have bad community relationship people. So it would have been great if they would have had somebody who uh, was very personable as a community rep, or at least for these videos, you know, have someone who's personable, who's very open and dynamic and outgoing and can really charge about the product. Because if you're going to come off dry speaking about a new product, you're not helping. You're yeah. not helping. I think so, I think every we've identified that kind of that passion was probably hidden behind the keyboard in the chat, mm -hmm. which is a place yeah. that many of us closed out, which is sad. So I think it's it seems to be a consensus that overall uh, with that with that live stream on Twitch was not impressed at the delivery because I think it was a great opportunity. They had this beautiful <laughs> vehicle, like there's a great opportunity and hype built up and ready to roll. 
um, that they could have capitalized on, right? And and I think that they just failed to fail to deliver that hype that we needed. Um, mm -hmm. a anyone else uh, on, on on the, the stream? Uh, on the stream, are we dividing? Let's, di let's dive into what we saw. <laughs> right, right. So the visuals. Um, they they showed a developer diary at the beginning of the presentation, a video that we haven't seen before, mm -hmm. and they showcased some of the uh, visuals and the uh, the development process of the uh, of the the platform. And but again, coming back to what we said earlier, I think the video Jordan made showcase showcases the, the platform much better than any video they released so far. And having seen the video from Jordan, I'm quite impressed with the visuals, uh, the improvements that they've made, and I'm pleased to hear that they want to push it even for uh, even further with the weather systems and all that stuff. Um, the user interface, I think, is very very good uh, for most users. I'm glad they, they kept that map. I'm glad they kept the map. That yes, I love the that map. map in the flight school. <clears throat> The map and the planning is absolutely fantastic. A thing that I noticed watching Jordan's video is that they removed a lot of setting sliders in the options panel. So now we are very much closer to what X-Plane offers with yeah, cause they removed sliders. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. yeah. And they did the same thing. Through them. So, yeah, so they, that's that's they, a thing they'll they, have to but check. They should have, an, they should have a, an advanced option if you do want to get deeper. Yes, they you should keep definitely. Those, keep that, I really hope they do. Tab. Yeah, I really hope they do add that because that's going to be a, the the number one feature people will ask. Otherwise, some up some people will come up with utilities to tune the CFG file to make it work. You know <laughs> how you want it to be, and that's that's it. Sure, it's going to be them. Everybody loves all flight simulators love to tweak. Yeah, exactly. But honestly, the visuals is definitely something that Lockheed Martin should learn from. Uh, the VC rain effect is something that we've been waiting for for over 10 years now. And it's, it's like no good reason not to be there. Well, I was and happy to see that it's it. uh, it's global. So it's if yeah. you have glass, you're going to have that, that visual or that effect. <laughs> and I was happy to mm -hmm. hear that because my first impression was like, so you know how in X-Plane they have their, their little flagship pet baby airplane. It's the C-172, right? Mm -hmm. Mr. B, correct me if I'm wrong. The C-172 is like their shining fucking example of an aircraft in yeah. the sim. And I mean, it yeah. is absolutely fucking brilliant. Everything on the plane that they want to show off in X-Plane, like they put it into this plane. And it's great. And I thought that they kept showing that uh, it's the Meridian, I think. Uh, they kept showing that Meridian. So I thought at first that maybe that effect was part of the Meridian or something and that it was going to be similar to our world now, which is... You know, you can have this effect, but it's based on the developer and the model and this and that. But no, it's fucking global. That means your plane has glass, it's going to have it. That's fucking sick. I'm down for that. And that's the way it should be. And that's a good thing that Mr. Steve, is it Stephen Hood? Is that, is that his name? Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. He's from the Formula One ga uh, racing genre. And being... Be having developed such a platform, I think, with a vehicle and an environment is fairly similar now in the flight sim world. So be making things generic like this I, is the way to go, and I think that's the way it's been with Formula One since he's been working on other platforms. So he's bring, I think he's bringing a lot of things to the table from those games he worked on um, as in terms of technology, and that's a good thing to move forward uh, in this in this world. I was impressed I with the visuals. Liked... I thought it I looked good. With the visuals. I, I thought it looked good even in that... their in their presentation thing in their sample. The the only thing that stood out to me was the rain effects. Um, <laughs> that was it. I mean, I mean, apart I mean, you... from that, it looked like X plane. They are there are subtleties like the ambient occlusion. That's something that every game has today, and there's no good reason not to have it. And I did see it. Uh, you have PBR that I can't personally see, but people can see. So I guess it's subjective to the people. But they did bring new tech to the, the table, and exactly. it's not tuned yet. And and, and we say yet. and we say that it looks like X Plane. I mean that's just a testament to where X Plane is and where we are. 
X planes yeah, so are. I was about to say the same thing. Yeah. Is that but, think, just 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 think about what we just said right now. Yeah. We are dealing with the first full blown sixty four bit Microsoft based flight simulator, and we're saying that it looks like X plane with dope rain effects. There you let's, go. Like let's yeah. like let's just appreciate. Now now here's the thing. I at, at nighttime, nothing on the face of planet Earth can compete with X plane. It's, I'm not even going to question that. Oh, and, and I, and that I, makes I me sad to I'm, hear I'm, that I'm, I'm because I know you buddy, you've tested you're, this. You're, oh, I mean, come <laughs> on. well, no, 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 no. Well, let's be honest, though. I mean, X plane, X -plane is, is sexy at night, dude. Built for lighting, honestly. Yeah. So lighting and physics—that's what that entire thing was built for. Um, that's why they struggle in other things, though seasons and clouds and all kinds <laughs> of other issues that they have. But when it comes to lighting. And when it comes to physics, x excels. Nobody can dispute that. It's like saying Aerofly isn't the best VR sim, right? Like, right. if you've ever tried Aerofly VR, that's it. Boom. You just got to say what it is. But I'll tell you what. If you're into Microsoft-based flight simulators, um, out of what has been shown to the world so far, what has been announced on the market so far, it's hard to dispute that this one is the most visually appealing. Absolutely. I'm, I'm, I, I'm feeling. I don't disagree with you. I mean, it looked very nice. I'm, I'm not saying it. I'm, but I'm just saying those those static shots they were showing. I'm just like you put explain eleven on that and it's done. Yeah. It's. I mean, I, I suppose you know once I've got my hands on it and I'm I'm in that cockpit and that cockpit I'm not happy with either. I mean, flat gauges. Where's where's the 3D gauges? Come on, spend some time on. You had 3D plane. gauges. They moved. Yeah, the, yeah, all yeah, the, all those they, gauges are 3D. So, so they so the looked a little flattish, but they moved. They were 3D and they moved. Yeah, they were, in yeah. fact, the funny the funny thing is, you know that all of those gauges are no longer rendered in. Um, what were they rendered in before, Kevin? Was it GDI or something like that? Um, I have no idea. So, so, so all of those gauges used to be software rendered, meaning they were re they were rendered on your CPU. Most of the gauges in FSX and P3D, that's the way that they were rendered. And now they're rendered completely off your GPU. They're all DirectX um, mm. rendered gauges now. So now, now they're 3D. I guarantee you they're 3D. They move, they shake, they do all kinds of stuff, and your CPU is running at like 30% utilization the entire oh, time. Oh, yeah. I'll take some of that. Uh, I am, I'm confused on how we're, we're saying it looks like they're uh, explaining to be. But well, hold on, hold on. I just want to take. I just want to take on what Jordan just said. Okay. This is exactly the content we should have heard on the freaking Twitch pr presentation. That's the exact thing we want to know, and yeah. those are little details that mm -hmm. they they said they did and en enhance the platform in the background. This is what we want to hear. Go on. They noodle. told us right. that. Noodle. That's a very Go good point. That's a very good point. Um. I'm failing to see the how how we're saying it looks like X plane, or maybe I missed something. Now to to start off, I'm going back through the you know the visual video file here. What I saw of the Piper, how it looked and all, was nice. I liked how the interior looked. It had a nice coloring balance uh, for my eyes. It looked very clean. It looked very nice. Uh, so a, I was very impressed with that, and I'm surprised to see that. Uh, like Mark was saying, do I, I would like to see it succeed? Yes, but I have tons of flipping reservations about it. Um, the shots I was able to see on the outside, honestly, look no better than what I can do in P3D right now. Honestly, I mean, some of the lighting though was lighting. pretty sick. No, I'm, 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 I'm gonna, uh, the lighting perhaps, you know, but number it's one, marginal. the ground, number yeah. one on the ground. Yeah, I could not, you know, the like. I saw the standard kind of like FSX textures and all where, you know, you have some dark areas and green areas. And we see that in FSX and P3D. Uh, you know, it is what it is. I can accept that. But when we're talking about you're coming out the gate indicating that you are kind of like next generation and all, I expect your next generation to kick it up a fucking notch and get over that FSX ground look. To me... It's, again, it's nice to see in a 64-bit platform. I'm excited to see that. That is great. I do like, you know, FSX, P3D, this, whatever. To me, number one, it'll always be the same shit, period. But I'm a just, I'm a little disappointed to see that. You know, they you talk about how great it looks, but I'm looking at things. I'm like, yeah, where? 
you know, we can talk about rain. Okay, fuck. You know, I, I saw a lot of comments briefly about the rain and all that. Yeah, sure, that's cool. We have now global rain effects in it. That's great. But it would mean to me that the you're not going to get the full advantage of it unless that aircraft you're flying is going to take full advantage of it. Correct me if I'm wrong on that, but just because you have rain does not indicate that the aircraft that you are flying with is going to take full advantage. If I use the wipers on a plane, is it going to actually take advantage of that? Or am I just going to see wipers going and rain still coming down? It's got to be able to take advantage of that. Um, I'm just going to go down through a few things. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm weather generator. You know, you know, before you go on to the next one, can I just come back mm -hmm. to the textures? Sure. Just, I see a global base there, so we can't really compare it. No, because it is apples to apples. <laughs> uh, absolutely, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if, if, if we were to uh, stick our global vectors on, which I thought I saw in Jordan's video, because I saw a little waves for a bit there, which I thought was vectors, if we stick vectors on it, we stick regions on it and, and such like, then that's when we compare it to our P3D at the minute, I feel. Anyway, you're, yeah, you're correct. I mean, I, I think, I think, but once again, I think this goes right back to Spark's earlier x comment. Okay, we're still comparing a base flight simulator that's in alpha to a fully loaded P3D and saying that it's a shame that both of them look the same. And, and here's the thing, and here's the thing, Noodle, I'm I'm not disagreeing with you, because look, mm -hmm. I think that draws can be made further out. I think that we yeah. still have it, and once again, yeah, it's, still it's, had the um, ring, right? what do you call it, early ring. access, right? You still have the ring, and you can see what they're trying to do to get rid of pop-ups, but it's definitely not there yet. It's not Baiting mature it yet. out a bit. Um, exactly, mm -hmm. like, like, don't get me wrong. I agree with you 100%, Noodle. I would love to see the ground environment enhanced and the LOD enhanced in the sim. Right now, I would agree that it's not 100%. Luckily, right now, it's just GA aircraft, so we're not flying high enough to really notice it anyways. <laughs> but, but um, you know, I agree. But once again, we are comparing fully loaded P3D and saying, I can do this in P3D right now. Yes, you can with a couple mm -hmm. extra hundred dollars and about two hours in install time. Yeah, right. Right. And, you know, and that's what I, you know, I'm kind of expecting, you know, I mean, hell, we're in a 64-bit playground now. So the resources aren't, well, resource loss is not so much of an issue. And I would have expected to see a bit, a bit more now. You know, if flight school was, the, was obviously the precursor to all of this, and I don't know how long the, the, uh, the overall development has been, um, I expected more. I really did. Yeah, I think I called um, I called flight school like the appetizer, and like this is supposed to be kind of the main yeah, course. I, I mean, I, yes. I, once again, let's go. Let's go back. Yes, it's an early alpha. Uh, it's you know the the, but I expected more on the initial release. Same as Noodle. Right. I think well, there I is no initial release be, yet. Uh, no, no. Be, uh, <laughs> the, the, the early access. I expected more from the early access. So I, you, I expected it to be wowed. I wanted mm -hmm. to go. Wow, this is, this is, this is what I want. I expected this is alpha. Yeah, that you should have yeah. been like, this is all, like this is fucking alpha. So, Holy so let me shit. let me be let me That's be very the real. Wow factor. Let me That's be real. Wow factor. Let me be very real here for a minute. And my 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 man Kevin's right here, and you know it's nothing but love, right? But like with Chase playing the same thing, right? I know it's alpha, but early on, I didn't exactly jump ship on on easy dog i didn't right that wow factor wasn't one was million percent right chase there playing the second it came out i love i love chase playing. i, I love really deleted easy dog <laughs> you know we we know why we we communicated very openly about why and we got it to that point but like the thing is at alpha something is so raw something is so new that you're not you don't really need to look right in front of you you kind of need to look down the line a bit Right. You need to say, is this a good first brick to lay down? Is it or is it not? Right. Is it looking at this thing? It looks like a pretty good first brick to lay down, because if we're going to build on that, then cool. Now, what would be a better brick to lay down is a completely fucking fresh rebuild, something ground up <laughs> that doesn't use the technologies we already, you know, kind of are using now. These limitations that we may or may not have. Now, I'm not a developer, you know, so that that that. Uh, 
I, I couldn't sit here and list out all the limitations of using that same kind of core base code, but um, it does look out of the box better than just about anything we can pull out of the box right now. Like we need to go out of the box. Here's, here's a basic idea for you. Run all the Sims at their stock default settings. Uh, shit, okay. Bro. Say no more. Say no Margaret. Look, just, Bro. just listen. Just listen, guys. If you think I don't already have things well planned out, you're crazy. You think these videos happen overnight? <laughs> you think these videos happen overnight? Huh? Come on. Release come that. On. Hey, hey, I'm hey. Sorry. Make, let, let, let's be very clear about who started the side by side game. Now. Make, hey, make, 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 make sure to make sure to give me one of those million mile pans, though. Okay, when you go, oh, okay, make sure to <laughs> hook me up with one of those, bro, from the ground up. I'll give you. I'll give you a camera application as soon as I get an SD. Card. Hey, that's, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> there we go. Well, that would be something good to see, that kind of comparison. I, I think that's what the community needs. They need to see this FSX P3D base. I got it. Out of them. Say no more. 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 You guys are giving away my whole plan. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but, you know, I'm, a, you know, again, as far as this being alpha, now we're saying, well, this is an alpha. Fuck that. Flight school. <laughs> Flight school was more like an alpha. There you Flight goes. school, I thought, was going to be touted as this is your appetizer sir, of what's to come. Okay, fair enough, right? Wasn't this supposed to be, didn't they not say, this is the precursor. This is the initial of what you're going to see from the final product, right? Now, yeah. when did when did Flight School go to on, on the market back on Steam? How long About ago was it? A year it? ago. Okay. Um, March, I think, of last year. Okay, so we're looking at a year. Yeah, about a year to death. Um... Yeah. Now, what I saw on Flight School in this, now I'm sure that there are some differences, there are some changes, but this is an alpha I expect to be fucking wild when you sell a product over a year ago, okay? I expected to see fucking more. I think I see and what I you're saying. People, yeah, I, I think most people wanted to see that too. I'm fucking sorry. You know, I, I wish you well, but fuck me. Granted, it was a small price to pay, but you sold an alpha already. I think I see what you're I saying. Your, your alpha more. came out in March of last year. Right. I expected more in a fucking year now, and I'm not seeing that. That is a damn disservice. I have here's, something here's, on this. Well, go ahead, Kevin. I'm sorry. because I. So, Flight School was released a long time ago and what I feel like hap what happened what I think happened is they wanted to build the team and figure out how the team would work around this platform mm -hmm. and then experiment with it with flight school and then when they released flight school experimented with the bug reports and all the process of it and then they started working on the the real thing Mm -hmm. So there's a, there's a step I think we need to add before the development is the crew building and the sure. uh, platform exploration because it's a very large and complicated platform and I think they had a lot of fixes to do in there before doing the big switch just like Lockheed Martin did. Mm -hmm. If they do the switch to 64 for V4, um, it would have taken it will have taken like a very long time to like fix the bugs and the limitations of the platform before moving to 64. And I think that's that's one of the big things, and that's the reason why it's not come as far as we might have liked uh, with the first alpha. Is that they need to they needed to fix and figure out some stuff before implementing new things uh, on right. the platform. So I think that the movement will go much faster from now. Uh, but it was I think that process was required before, uh, and that's the reason why we had flight school and some iterations of of Steam Edition as well. So gets and can, can I can I chime in here? Yeah, bro. So so first of all, did I, you just I, call uh, me Getson? I'm gonna fucking kill you. <laughs> you know my name. Did you say Getson. O M, -O -O -M Getson. Oh, oh my Getson. god, I'm gonna okay, kill you. Calm down. All right, all right, Getson. Calm down. Calm down. All right. All right so, um, <laughs> god, dude. Did you just call me Getson? <laughs> I get it so much online, bro. I do. Um, so. uh... 
so yeah, so so Edson and Kevin, you guys are the only two here that really know me, Mr. B. I'm just getting to know you and Sparks and Noodle. So I think you two are pretty fairly respected in the community. And I want to ask you guys this question very frankly. This is just, you know, here in the inner webs of flight simulation. Do either one of you honestly think I am a sellout? No. Do either one of you actually think that about me? No, knowing me as well as the two of you do, do either one of you guys think I've sold out? I don't think so. I think it's no. uh, okay. so. So, so, have, so, so, yeah. so, you don't have to say anymore. All I'm saying is that you're here because you're not. Community. <laughs> I just want to make it clear to the community that what I am about to say is not because I am some, you know, fanboy or sellout. This is honest stuff. So, I think that what Kevin just said is absolutely right, Noodle. I get it. You look at flight school and you're like, man, it should be so much better than that. But I just want to look at the other simulators we have on like on the on the market and 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 i and i think this is critical because i was a huge fan of aerofly what was was it like four or five years ago i thought it was insane before anybody even really talked about it everybody thought it was this little arcade thing and i thought it was amazing in fact i'm the first person who shared it with a lot of my friends so i waited forever for ipax to come out with aerofly fs2 and when they did they put it out in early alpha and my first review of it was negative i gave it a bad review on steam even though i was the biggest aerofly one um, user you can imagine and the reason why is because of that exact same reason noodle I was sitting there thinking I waited for this damn sim for two years three years and this is all you gave me like we don't even have waves we don't have AI still we don't have ATC after three years of waiting mm -hmm. and a lot of people were disappointed about explain when they came out and their with their beta yeah they changed the user interface but a lot of people were saying so what it's explained with PBR right and, and at the end of the day to Kevin's point these flight, these, 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 and I'm going to take you guys from when I started my YouTube channel. And the only reason I know this stuff is because don't forget, I started my YouTube channel all because people said FSX Steam sucked. And I said it was better on VAS. And six months later, Lockheed Martin created a P3D that was, a, that was more efficient with VAS. Let's be very honest about the timeline here. So they started in this industry with old crap FSX and made it better. They then came out with a pretty rich kind of wanting to look version but it was 64 bit at least version of fsx which was flight school and it was crap and now we're saying that it that that so edgen just said that it is probably the best looking sim out of the box so think about how far we came and we're just here in early alpha hmm. so i know it feels like things are moving slow as molasses but we literally went from three years ago, four years ago, where the only game in town was Lockheed Martin, who everybody was afraid of and thought they were going to, you know, send government lawyers after you if you use their product. <laughs> and FSX hadn't been developed and explain nobody knew really what was going to happen with it. We went from nothing to now <laughs> comparing th four different games uh, that have come out or flight sims that have come out in the last year. So I know it feels slow, but, but if you really look at what they've done from a, from a, train sim company to creating what they just did at least for an alpha i i can't say they haven't been you know doing something i think they've done quite a bit from a startup on, essentially. Yeah, on an I absolute really scale that. compared to fsx it's miles away i think yeah i mean don't get me wrong i mean for what they've done to take they've taken a decades old platform and done what they did I can appreciate that. It's it's been long overdue. We all know it, and it is an impressive undertaking. Definitely, hats off for them for getting a licensee, life licensee, licensing and permission to take the product and then do what they've done. I think that's great. Um, it, it it's just man, it it, it just it, it just. I never thought I was going to buy it. I might buy this, and I'm and I'm and I'm still not too sure. I thought I'm gonna buy it just to see, but not buy it to expand upon it because there's other elements within that I saw on this cast that I'm like, no. Um, yeah. But I do agree with what you're saying. I mean, I do understand that games and things take time, and for all intents and purposes, for this, I'm just going to call it a game, even though we know it's a sim. Uh, we're I do understand it takes time. <laughs> but again, yeah, I, I really expected to see more. I mean, like There was no wow. Definitely. No, I, I wasn't wowed. And I, I and I went into this not expecting it to be wowed other than seeing the texturing of the aircraft. 
primarily on the inside. I'm not caught up on, oh my God, reflections on the plane. Honestly, I can give two shits about that because when I fly, I'm primar primarily in the inside. You're a systems so, guy. You're 100% a systems yeah. guy. I know that. If, yeah. if it's, if it's you're reflecting. You're not, you're not shiny. I'm shiny. No, I, I'm yeah. not. You know, if, if it's reflecting buildings and shit, great. But I can give two shits about that. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. I, I want to see those aftermarket guys take your product and be able to make kick-ass aircraft from the inside out. So here's, you know? here's kind of like the, the, my, my, my thought on it. Um, you know, I've, I've kind of used this analogy before of kind of building this doorstep product. Um, when I am flying on stream or something and somebody comes into the chat, they're like, hey, this is fucking cool. How do I get in on this? I like airplanes. I look up every time one flies over. I need a recommendation, right? I need to have a nice fucking, you know, 10 second intro to here's how you can get in, right? That for some time uh, was uh, FSX Steam Edition. It's a great, great, great way to just, you know, look, man, it's cheap. It's easy to set up. Go Raiders and wallet. Yeah, I have no money. It's cheap. You know, you can borrow 15 bucks from your mom. Pick it up. If you like it, great. If you don't like it, then you're only out 15 bucks. Like, it's not a big deal. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not a big deal. That recommendation then shifted to flight school. For me, personally, this is my recommendation. Shifted to saying, scoop up flight school. Why? Because it gave a little bit more of a, of a training aspect into it, right? It's like, hey, here's learning how to fly for real a little bit. Here are some, some places you can fly. Here's an easy to navigate map, a much better experience. So my recommendation was that. Now, mm -hmm. seeing what I've seen on uh, Flights in World, does that change once again? My honest answer is yes. And I think that's what they're going for. Like these guys at Dovetail, they're not, they're going to be this doorstep application. They know that P3D, mm -hmm. we have to babysit that shit all day. We got config files that change on their fucking own. We got, we got somebody that's down here in the lounge just about every day of the week. Oh, today my shit's fucked. Who's next? You're it. Tomorrow your shit's fucked, right? <laughs> X-Plane 10? Complex. You basically needed to be a Linux nerd to enjoy that. You couldn't be a Windows guy. You couldn't really be a Mac guy. You needed to be a Linux guy to enjoy X-Plane uh, 10. 11 came out, kind of changed that game. Now Facts. eleven is eleven is like you can it's attainable. Just about anyone can get in on eleven. Dovetail knows where to place themselves. They need to place themselves even beyond closer to the kids than X Plane Eleven. How they do that? Branding. Start with that. <coughs> Flight sim world. God knows how much it cost them to scoop that up. And they scooped it up everywhere. They're putting the money out there because when some kid like mine at age 11, goes on Steam with his new machine that we're going to build soon, and he's interested in flight, he's going to type in what? Flight. Right? He's not going to type in X-Plane. He's going to type in flight, and it's going to come up, and it's going to be right there. And that, that marketing power is at Dovetail. They have the pool. They have the marketing power. They definitely have the... They're embedded with Steam. Right? So they're positioning themselves really well for success. A success that may be beyond the hardcore simmers a success that may be the future simmers and it's okay to place yourself marketing wise at the start of the gate right maybe you're you're not building your product to service all the nerds maybe you're servicing you're, you're placing your product to service all of the soon-to-be nerds and you're okay with in not between. being yeah just right up in there or or you can also expand okay. to cover even more right? or you, so you can start also at the front end and you can grow out okay, right? or right. i'm sorry right. Yeah. Right. Can we can we expand on the steam aspect of this? Because this oh is where boy. I oh, think shit. it's going to. Oh, this, oh, is where, this is where I go on. This you. is where I think it's going <laughs> to die. Oh man. This is where I think it's going to die. Well, I think it's going to. DLC. Gonna... I'm going to say it right out there. That's DLC. Business. That's business. What's wrong so with DLC? Can I, can I just, yes, can I, it is. I just say yes, one go, last thing. Go ahead. Thing. Go ahead. Go on, on, topic. I, I just I just wanted to close one last note, which was just that. So, so I do agree with what you're saying, um, Edson, is that, you know, obviously you look at this thing versus a, what I consider industrial sim like P3D, 
which at the end of the day, that's exactly what P3D is, right? It's a commercial simulator. Yeah. On their page, they say specifically, we do not want you to be entertained by this or not. Don't mm-hmm. want you to be entertained, but we don't want you to use this for entertainment purposes. They say that hardcore. very specifically. Mm-hmm. But here's the thing. Is it really hardcore? It's the same goddamn thing as FSX. Well, I mean, has, the hardcore uh, simmers. But, 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 but that, that's what I'm trying to say, though. Is yeah, what yeah. exactly makes P3D for the hardcore simmer? Here's what makes it hardcore. The utilities and the power of the platform for those who want to create scenarios, for those who want to have point objects, for those people who want to do crap that we have no business doing <laughs> in flight simulation, right? <laughs> and, 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 and I think that when people look at it and, you know, I, I heard, Kevin, you make the reference earlier that, you know, Lockheed Martin can learn from this stuff. Who knows? Maybe they do. Maybe they don't. But I think P3D is a beautiful simulator. P3D version 3 is. It is. And I, if you look at it, for the last year, the only videos I have made have been all P3D videos. I have not made a single FSX Steam edition or any other sort of, you know, dovetail sort of sim until this one today for a year. So I, I admit that right now P3D for me being not only a real world private pilot, even though let's be honest, I never use it for training, but you know, for me, it's my dominant sim right now. All, all I did today and all I want to show today is that where I started, which was I could go to the store and buy FSX as could the hardcore guy. In fact, my, my neighbor across the street, when he was getting his PPL, he's the one who got me started on flight simulation because he was training using flight sim 95 back then. So why, why can't the hardcore and the, whatever the, all come together and fly the same doggone sim i don't know but i understand what you're saying i mean this definitely is a break from what we've become accustomed to which is an industrial feeling sim and now the interface does look let's be frank it looks gamey um but all i really care about is when i get in that damn thing and fly that i feel acky feel and that it looks (laughs) realistic acky feel and good track ir yeah yeah. and that i could use track ir and you know that's that's about it that's all i re- and it doesn't crash and it does not crash i, I look yeah. for this thing being in an alpha i if i look at my steam right now i have played it for 25 hours um at least this most recent build and i can tell you honestly i've had one crash it's not bad yeah not it's it's there's there's all. something though that's very attractive about the fact that p3d is a training simulator and is sold as a training simulator mm-hmm. and a commercial use because yeah. some of the kids or some of the the, the pilots that are that, that are very hardcore they'll go and pfpx the shit out of their flights and they want to feel like they <laughs> they want to feel like they're doing the real shit so they're going to get the, the they want it to feel like work the, go out and get a damn the, job yeah, <laughs> yeah one of the big kids, one of the big kids use and i got into the well in your video i just felt like i got into the user interface and i'm like this this is a game I don't see myself mm. using this. It's too friendly. It's like <laughs> getting in a Nerd. I'm getting in a game. I'm not getting in a sim. It's not hardcore enough. It's not industrial enough. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Right. But we're used to that. So I'm, I'm sure that's design. what a Boeing but, pilot but, but, would but, say but, in an let's Airbus. Be honest. But let's be honest, Kevin. That's exactly what Easy Doc said about Chase Plan. <laughs> they said this looks like some simplistic. They said it looks like some simplistic dumbed down. And oh my God, if you only knew how to alt TX command this in Easy Doc, would do the same thing as Chase Plan. I'm like, I don't have time to create camera variables for myself. Let me run the goddamn program. Sliders, I'm saying. sliders. So, where are my so, fucking so, knobs? So, 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 I'm with you. That I know that you guys said you think it looks <laughs> nice to me. I was honestly, honestly, in, in one of my edits, I actually said this is my least favorite part of the sim. But then afterwards, once I went through it a little bit more, I was like, okay, let me calm down. I guess it's not. <laughs> that I do want. I do want to. Uh, I think it was Sparks Point. I do want an advanced section. A hundred percent. I need advanced sure. section because mm-hmm. yes. it, it's way too narrow right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's good. Like, are, are we yeah, moving I'll to I'll the like next section? Oh, let's yeah, go, no, let's, go, let's, let's talk. Right. Let's talk Sorry. Steam. <laughs> let's talk Steam. Yeah, let's let's yeah, jump on this. It's... All right, Jordan. Before we jump into this, do you have any information that that would be worth <laughs> noting before we destroy it? The piece. So, so I'll tell you this is. Um, I intentionally in my video, I stayed out of this because look, let me, let me make something very clear to everybody watching and not a lot of people know me. I don't have like those self-reveal videos on my channel. 
I have never, and Kevin, you can attest to this because I did one hell of a showcase for your product. I have never asked for nor been compensated by any company for any of the videos that I've ever done on my channel. I want to make that very clear to everybody. That goes for Milvids, that goes for um, the pilots Serious. guys, that goes for Orbix, that goes for Dovetail, that goes for Chase Plane, that goes for PMDG, that goes for Real Air, that goes for everybody I've ever told you makes dope stuff. It's because I like it. And it's worth my time to edit nine hours worth of video to make a good video for you guys. So with that said, I am not a businessman. I don't make money in this business. I don't have any business interest here. And to be honest with you, other than my friends in the industry, I don't understand really how this thing is going to play out. But what I do know using common sense is that there is clearly a problem and a disconnect between what I would consider. And this is not in a disrespectful way, because if you guys know, the only planes I really fly are PMDG planes, but let, let's be honest, PMDG, Orbix, Aerosoft, all those guys are like the old guard, right? They yeah. have, they have oh, owned sure. the void. They have owned the void. There has been no steward of this genre since Microsoft dipped out. And Lockheed didn't care because obviously their business is not a consumer based business their business you know they're, they're they're selling defense contracts for god's sakes using this platform not trying to get mm -hmm. kids to fly together online so <laughs> you know um they have owned that void and clearly there is now a, a a vacuum if you will that needs to be solved my position in all this is i want to fly i think rob randazzo said it very clearly i want to fly what i want to fly in what i want to fly it in i do think however we also have to appreciate that there is a new player who has literally dumped what I would assume to be millions. I mean, I, I look on forums and people talk about how much would it cost for me just to make my own sim? Yeah, let's start, <laughs> yeah, no. let's, <laughs> let's start with a quarter million dollars just in overhead, right? Go ahead and so, take up um, that GoFundMe already. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, right? So, um, so, so, you know, they have come in here and taken a big gamble. Not only did they revitalize the industry with the re-release of FSX Steam way back when, but they took a gamble with this really volatile industry. And I think that mm -hmm. PMDG should, I'm not saying appreciate that because at the end of the day, PMDG is one of the reasons we're even still here talking, right? They kept us alive, but, or they helped keep us alive, I should say. But, you know, my position between the two of them is just work shit out, dude, because I'd yeah. love to have a 747 in the sim. I would love to, but yeah. how, how we get there, yeah. I can't tell you. And if it never happens, fly the 747 and whatever i can fly it in and i'll fly whatever i can in this sim and when i want to fly at night i'll still go to x plane when i want to put on my hdc vibe i'll still fly Aero. so <laughs> where it lands in that i can do a damn less that's pretty much my is... the whole thing and you guys can take over <laughs> this, is could, this is what could kill this platform is steam i mean obviously the steam are going to take their car uh dovetail are going to take their car and what's going to be left for the developer? That's that's the key. And the developer's going to go, you pay me this, I'm out. Mm -hmm. And all you're going to end up is the planes and the aircraft that have been developed by Dovetail. And will they be up to scratch? I can't say that. There, there are multiple scenarios here. Because... Um, Obviously, I definitely see blurry. those multiple avenues yeah. for sure. Yeah, we we don't know. It's all blurry, and they don't want to talk about it. But FlySimCon's coming in June, and they will have to answer it. They will like literally, literally no no way they'll get out of there without answering yeah. those questions. Yeah. So we'll know by then. But there are multiple avenues, and by now, how it seems like it is, uh, is that there will be no way to. To, to create or share those third-party add-ons officially without going through their, uh, their Steam store. store. Exactly, which is 60 to 65. Those are the figures that we've seen on, on various posts online. 60 to 65% of commission to yeah, it's them. public knowledge already, yeah. yeah. Which, which, which yeah. for the record, if that is true, I think that that is a pretty steep... That's heavy, man. Amount. Well, from this is what they say on the forum, and from having spoken with those guys earlier to sell our product on the platform, I can't say exactly the number, but it's fairly similar. So it's totally logical uh, from from what what they said on the forums. So this is one of the avenues that we 
it's possible, it's, it's likely it's going to be that way. And the SDK would be locked under an agreement, an, an, an NDA uh, with the company. And that's what I fear like it's, it's going to happen. The other avenue would be that they will supply an, a public SDK. People will be able to develop on their own and distribute on their own. But if you want to, if you want to get a better reach, then you go on the Steam store. And I think that's like a 25% chance it's going to happen, uh, mm. depending because I think they're they are scrambling right now uh, at Dovetail with all of that feedback, and I think they're starting to realize that if they use the model they plan on using, everything's going to crash to pieces because there's no yeah, way PMDG would sell their product there at this mm -hmm. amount of commission. They couldn't afford to. I will not no put way. my product. Either. You're not no. going to buy a hundred and twenty dollar. You're not going to buy a hundred and twenty dollar product on Steam. It's going to be yeah, two hundred dollars no. just to make their money back. Just to make the money they they're going to put into developing it. It's going mm -hmm. to be two hundred dollars on Steam. Yeah, it boils down to no business. No one's going to buy it. So, so, so no I'll one's going to buy it. I'll, I'll tell you that in um in in risk management um they talk about in risk management courses they they normally talk about one of the most expensive places to have attrition or product attrition is a gas station and the reason they were saying that is because the gas station owner has to sell candy in that gas station because the the margin that they make on gas is next to nothing so if somebody mm -hmm. steals so much as 10 gallons you're going to have to sell 110 gallons to even so much as break even on the amount that you lost right and i think that that's how i look at this <clears throat> and, and so, I, number one, I know that th there's, and I have no idea how this works. Honestly, guys, I do not have any idea how the business model here works. But what I think has been said is that you have the option to sell on Steam. I know that Dovetail's saying they're coming out with their own kind of store thing. And then you could sell it wherever else you want, right? And then, of course, your consumers can choose where to go. Um, I don't even know if you really have to market on Steam or market towards your Steam store, to be honest with you. But the reality is, and I guess it took me a little bit of time to understand this, is that as we talk about all of the new folks that are going to be coming into flight simulation, I can understand why developers would be concerned that that volume is going to drive to the most accessible place, which is Steam, right? And therefore, their margins will be cut no matter what you do. And, 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 and in my head, I think to, you know, the the flight sim folks who have been around for a while anyways, half of them say Steam. So they will probably still go to Sim Market or, yeah, I don't want to call them anybody's names, but you guys know what I mean. They'll yeah. go to whatever stores they need to go to, especially if the developers do great things like Orbix did. Orbix has a nice store, a unified installer, all that stuff. Orbix, using Orbix, to be honest with you, it's easier to make a purchase through Orbix Direct than it is to do it through Steam. If it's like honest. this, bro. It's, yeah. on, exactly. it's yeah. instant, instant yeah. purchase. Very honest. It is easier because I get my damn Steam Guard app thing that needs to be approved every time I make a purchase. I need, yeah. to, you know, I don't have LastPass that can fill it in for Steam. It's a disaster. So, I think that, and I'm not trying to tell anybody how to run their business, but if I were in this position, I would try to make a unified platform like Orbix so that I could literally compete with Steam for Absolutely, my own products. Absolutely, bro. Mm -hmm. um, but but it's but but look, right but look, but look, that is a. That is a selfish thing for me as a consumer to say. All I'm trying to say at the end of the day is let's figure out how the hell to get the products that we want in the Sims that we want because all of this money grabbing and money retaining and I don't want to give up my pie and I want all of your pie crap, it doesn't serve any of us talking right now any good. Except maybe Kevin because he has a business, but everybody else. <laughs> well, my Ke Ke Kevin's like, anyway. the more platforms, the more chase planes I sell. The more platforms, the more yeah. 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 But the yeah. only option I chase see plane for in you, there, chase if, plane for you. If, if like PMGG would agree to sell in the store, let's say hypothetical, they would sell the product on the Steam store 20 times the amount they sell it on their own store. Yeah, That's it's the exposure is huge. Yeah, I yeah. I it's the only way I see it working, and it's it doesn't make sense because you pay like the hundred percent time, <laughs> the, the but, value but, of the but, poor sim. But, but but Kevin, to that point, and I was actually just thinking about this the other day. So, and oh my God, Edson, why did I come on this show? I swear, I'm getting into all <laughs> kinds of my deepest thoughts about flight simulation. That I never talk about. I love it on my channel. <laughs> luckily, luckily, nobody watches your show, so nobody will see this. So, uh, <laughs> oh, that's so the. Uh, <laughs> Click. <laughs> so, so, so I was, just thinking about this. I was just thinking about this the other day. So you remember 
when there was the uproar that PMDG was making FSX users pay twice for basically yeah. moving to P3D. Yeah. And then not just that, but somehow P3D also costs, I think it was like, what, 20%, 30% more than its um, FSX counterparts? Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. And everybody was up in arms. And what was PMDG's response? Do you guys Tough. remember why they said they did it? Uh, well, it's uh, uh, the they, one. See, they were, that's, so, that's so funny. Yeah. We paid twice for the same damn products, plus more money, and nobody here can explain yeah. why PMDG even did it. Yeah, they kept using the, the excuse of, uh, well, you know, P3D, and it was like, it was more work to make our products work mm, in P3D. Close. It, did, it, it didn't matter. You're close. No. We paid it. No, no it's not that. So what it's, Noodle's saying was close. It was it. because they, they had some licensing agreement. There you go. And there they you also go. had, it was a difference in the licensing. And it was also to ensure that they would be able to update it with the future versions. Because and don't forget, FSX was dead in the water back in the days. So mm -hmm. you release one product, it's good forever. P3D had to support it. And they, they provided those updates throughout V2, V3, and eventually V4 also. So that's why the price was more expensive. So you're dead on. So Kevin's absolutely right. So they said two things. And this is not me assuming this. These are things that Robert Randazzo told the community. So I don't want anybody thinking I'm speculating here. He said that there were increased licensing and legal costs. And, you know, I guess, and I can see it, right? You're putting a quote unquote study level sim in a commercial platform. You're probably going to have to lawyer up if somebody somehow crashes the real thing after using right. your same you know what i mean that's a terrible example mm. but you understand what i'm saying so i can understand mm. why he had additional costs well i i have no idea how much those costs are plus of course he they have to pmg you know they have their proprietary anti-piracy stuff so he has a lot of overhead in his business and that is clearly why he has to defend his position and i and i agree with him defending his position after the great business that he has built but when i think about all those overheads that come with p3d i mean how much more would you really have to apply to flight school? So you don't have the commercial exposure that you have when you're developing a commercial simulator for a commercial platform, right? You don't have, <clears throat> obviously, the same sort of support issues that you would have. And I'm just saying if somebody were to buy through Steam, this is just hypothetical. You don't have some of the same support issues, store issues, piracy issues that you would have if you had to sell it to your own store. And the list goes on and on. So, look... P3D has his expenses expenses too, according to Robert, not according to everybody, because we know that there are some developers who just put their <laughs> stuff in P3D and everything <laughs> works as Hunky Dory. You know? Yep. Right? So, so you know, I'm not going to go into that debate, but the point is, is that if there are if there's overhead there, I'm sure there's overhead with Dovetail. I'm sure that that brings the number far closer together than even the worst case scenario of 65% than we would originally anticipate. Is it still fair? I'm not going to say that it is or it isn't. And I personally think 65% is not fair. But um, you, you guys get what I'm saying, right? Is that yeah, there are absolutely. expenses for developing for every platform. And I'm not mm -hmm. going to say that a PMDG bird is going to be 10 times more in Flight Sim World just because it's probably a total of... I mean, I have no idea what percentage it, it would be more expensive to develop on than P3D. But you guys get what I'm saying. Yeah, but it's going to be price hiked. But, but this is end. yeah. But this this is the thing. It is this is this is going to either sink, uh, Flight Sim World or or not. The, but I I in the heart my heart hearts. I think this is what's going to sink it. But they've got yeah. some big I, names. I, I do I think mean, it's the biggest biggest hurdle. I will <clears throat> I will say that it's a big I iceberg. Think... But but it's not yeah. like it's not like it's destined to sink. I mean they have they have some big names. We've got A to A, yeah, and, and they're yeah, trying, right? and I just and think they're, they're Yeah, I, I think they're knocking on a very reinforced door that has been reinforced for the last decade. Yeah, and 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 and, and, and let's be honest, and let's be honest. Every and I said this over a year ago. If you look at my flight sim vlog thing that I did, where I first talked about flight sim world and flight school, way way back when, I specifically said DLC is what we've been doing for the last 10 years anyways. We just purchase our DLC differently than the rest of the world. Everybody <laughs> else does it. Yeah. Everybody else does it through unified web stores. And we purchase our yeah. shit from everywhere. From everywhere. And, we're and, and we act like we are the, we are the, we are the blessed ones. Yeah. Come on. But here's, here's what I don't like about that. Community. <laughs> and, and, and at the end of the day, I'm not saying that this is the solution. I'm saying that Dovetail needs to probably knock more gently on this door. Right, probably back down so that folks at least, 
you know, crack the door and see who's there. And then eventually maybe the door opens up and everybody learn, learns how to live together. But I hope so. them, them, them banging at the door like this simulation market is anywhere near prepared for yeah. it's not Steam the right approach is, is a, is a, I, I think is going to be a rude awakening. Yeah. I don't, I don't think Steam the thing is going to work. And, you know, I do agree that, you know, in essence, no matter what game you play there, you are basically doing DLC. But what I, would expect from this is not to fire up my sim and see store every other fucking game <laughs> has a store <laughs> aka microtransactions okay all the games do it all, all these major games out there do it they have the microtransactions they have their in-game shop you click on it you get redirected to their website to go to their store it's a foul to see that in the simulator. It's really a foul to me. And then you're going to tie, in essence, as, as, as far as we know for now, it's only going to be tied to Steam. Bullshit. Because, again, the, the flight sim community, of all the communities I've been in, is very rabid. They want <laughs> choice. They, they want blood. choice. And they want I blood. Am, <laughs> and I, they want fucking you know, blood. I'm a big, I'm a big cross... <laughs> Uh, cross-platform, cross-spectrum gamer from different shit. This is the most rabid one because the people who are into, especially those who spend a lot of money, want choice. And if you're going to lock it into Steam only, fuck you. But see, you know? in, a, in a way, in a way uh, though, like in a way, we're the old guard now too, right? Because uh, if they're if they're positioning this product to be you know the 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 new wave of of people discovering this they won't give a shit cuz that new wave's already ready for that that new wave knows nothing but steam and microtransactions no but no because that that whole market is a bad taste as it is to see a shop within a game it is a bad thing already yeah and, and noodles, noodles a hardcore gamer by the way if you can't tell yes. yeah no no so, so i'm a with proper you. gamer i played the division yeah. I, I played the division ah. i'm sitting i'm sitting next to a ten thousand dollar pc and then i have my flight sim pc which is actually a little jetline sitting right next to it so trust me i'm a hardcore guy i'm on a predator x34 right now bro uh, I'm, i almost I'm, bought I'm, that yeah i'm i'm all in it so I played the division, and the other day they started making you pay for freaking backpack skins. And I'm sitting what? here, I, I, no, bought, dude. I, was like, I was like, let me get this straight. I bought this old <laughs> crap game that, that didn't even look the same as it looked in its trailers. Okay, mm -hmm. it's bugged, it's got hackers everywhere. Then I buy the damn season pass, and I'm not going to lie, the season pass was only good for like maybe one or two things, and the rest of it was a waste, as most season passes are. It's like the Fallout yeah, 4 yeah. season pass. That was the biggest waste of money I ever made. But, but I love Fallout 4. But, uh, no, I know, exactly, and I love the damn division, and I still play the division. So as offended as I am, I bought a backpack skin, and I look stupid wearing it, but, yeah. but, I, but I mean, not that actually I did not buy a backpack skin, it was a gun skin. Exactly. Take the wallet. Take the screen. Yeah. So, but, but the point is, it is. It was offensive to me there. It's offensive to that community. It's offensive to everybody. Nobody likes mm -hmm. microtransactions and DLC. This is where, though, guys, mm -hmm. I am. This is the only reason I'm even here with you right now, Edson, because let me promise you, Dovetail Games is listening. Like, nice. think about it. Everything they didn't come yeah. up with the ideas on what to do in the sim themselves. And and don't forget, I, I know that earlier, I think it was uh I don't know if it was Noodles or it was Sparks was talking about um uh you know flight school and how it came out to a very flat departure pretty much. I agree with that hundred percent. And look, they went back to the drawing table and if you're gonna tell me this looks the same as flight school, I'll tell you you're crazy. Right? I mean you, you could see the remnants of it in there, but mm -hmm. and, 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 and and let's not forget, as I said in my video. There is more to come that will blow your flipping minds. I promise you that. I hope so. But, Very but, cool. But all of that, like, but all of that is I for really, nothing. I do, I do hope it, it does succeed, and I hope it is what yeah. we... Yeah. Let's, we, let's do this. One at the end of the day, but... I. But, but all of that's for nothing if we cannot get the community to figure this crap out, because yeah. I do not want to fly. I mean, don't get me wrong. I probably will still use it, even if it just... 
you know, gets enhanced. It's good to look at. So I'll I would use that when I would use it when I'm mobile. I mean, when I'm mobile, yeah. like I don't, I have a, I have a nice uh, Asus gaming PC. So when I'm mobile, I don't take P3D on the road to me. That's just too yeah. elaborate. It's too much shit yeah, to go with hard. it. It's so, too hard, so yeah. my mobile, my mobile solution was uh, flight school for some time. Anytime I was just on the road, it was flight school and a controller. Um, this could very well be that that replacement. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, like, and, and everything Steam, I filmed in that video was boom. Really nice controller funny enough but um awesome. and the, fun, the, the funny thing is half my p3d videos i'm flying it because it's not commercial exclusive um, but the, uh, <laughs> jordan but, king uses an xbox controller yeah but the wow. um but, but but all i'd say is that you know i agree with you 100 percent noodles i'm not comfortable with a lot of stuff either but i'll mm -hmm. tell you this i've written about four letters to them they, you know, talk to them on the forums, talk to them on AvSim. You know, clearly they're not, they, they weren't joking. They said they're in this for the long haul. They could have dipped out after flight school, which is personally what some people <laughs> thought they were going to do. Yeah. Right, look, how, so. look, look how quickly Microsoft turned their back on their 20 year old franchise because they had one bad title flight. Look how oh, quickly they yeah. headed for the hills. They That's ran. That's right. All right. They ran. That's right. I forgot these these tail guys aren't going anywhere. So all, all I'm saying is, mm -hmm. look, if they screw up, I will be the first ones to tell you they screw up. And I do think they've had some missteps in this launch. And I just said that about their damn stream. But <clears throat> I'm telling you, the simulator itself has so much potential. But damn it, the community just... And I don't mean us, mm -hmm. the community. I mean the... The, the community <clears throat> the, except us. The business community. <laughs> Is, is what's struggling to um to, to help the sim and, and and i and i appreciate that and i just hope that people figure it out but i'm not getting well, it that i think that it, it it really lies in the hands of dovetail at this time yeah. Yeah. Let's, do, let's do let's do closing when statements, you think about everybody. it objectively one by one. Obje objectively or subjectively regardless of how you look at it 60 or 65 percent commission uh, if you want to develop like FS Lab A320, PMDG uh, aircraft, or complex airplanes or add -on, or add-ons, it's not possible. It's just not possible when you have this much of a of a, of a commission to pay. So it will, they will have to make a decision on where they want to head. And if those complex aircraft cannot be made on their platform because of this limitation then they will go to other platforms like X-Plane and, uh, and some others. That's really as simple as it is. So it's, it's in Dovetail Games right now, and it's in their hands to, to choose where they want to go from there. Mm -hmm. All right, let's do, let's do a, a round of closing statements, yeah? Just kind of like uh, your, your you know, closing statement or your wish to Dovetail or, you know, just mm -hmm. just throw it out there. Just, you know, go one by one. Should, we'll we, go, with, should we go around the clock? Yeah, let's go around the clock. Sure. Start with Mr. Noodle. Uh, just a few things. A, you know, for Dovetail folks who happen to see this, don't get me wrong. I would like to see your product succeed. I do. Um, I don't know. It, it You know, I will probably buy it to see how it is to so give me an idea of what the FSX core is going to be like in a 64 bit <clears throat> environment to see what can possibly be made out of it. So there's my possibility there, but some things that need to happen that were not a really addressed, I feel to me, but this is what I feel that you guys need to do. Weather generation generator. You need to implement that. I do not want to have to buy a separate utility. If you could do that to make it to where it's of uh, high five simulation things, you know, active sky, uh, active sky. If you can do that in your base sim, that's a win. That's a plus for me. You mentioned multiplay. You only mention multiplay Steam. You need to open that up to be more than just Steam because most people are do are not going to want to be locked up into one networking environment and Steam. Eh, not a good idea. Um, your, the Garmin data, I noticed that in your credits, you talk about Garmin, which comes down to navigational data updates. If you're going to be locked into the way Garmin does it, ah, uh, that's not going to be good. I hope you allow nav data, navigraph, um, let that be updatable. We were all stuck with an old coded base nav data. I hope that can be updated, make that updatable. And, um, resources do a video 
Show us what the resource is like, <laughs> the usage. Let's see that usage. You know, tell us as potential customers how much of a gain we're going to see in a 64-bit environment, which everybody has, everybody wants it. Everybody wants it. Show it to us. Add more options in those menus. Give some more nerdy options for us who want that. Don't just think about your entry levels that you may be uh, aiming at and or the mid-range. Consider you're going to have hardcore types, very nerdy, very dig into your shit. They're going to want that. I'm one of them. Provide that. That would be good. Um, there's a myriad of other things, but if you can get some of those things and you can get people on board your product, the outside developers who have been around for a while, while like the PMDs, the Majestics, the Aerosoft, the A2A, uh, and so forth, where we can get our aircraft in there. Broker those deals. Broker those deals. Make this happen. Because if you don't, you're not going to get the sales that you think you made because people want their PMDGs. They want their Airbuses. They want all those things that they already spent money for. They would love to be able to see that transcribe into your new platform. So I wish you the best. I, pr I will probably buy it to see how it's going to look, but you you're going to have to open up the options and please don't make Steam your only way to get things uh, installed and bought for your, <laughs> for your product because that's pretty fucked up. <laughs> Mr. Mark, what Noodle said? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what Noodle said. Plus, I'm a flight simulator. I'm not an entry level. I'm not a child. I'm not new to to flight sim at all. I have FSX. I have Steam Edition, and I have an X Plane. I have uh, combat flight simulator so I'm not new to this I've been doing this for most of my life I mean I started very very early I want your platform to succeed I really do um, I will buy it I did not buy uh, the flight school because I didn't think it was for me uh, that's the reason I didn't buy flight school I, I looked at it and I went I, I know how to fly the planes uh, what do I need a training tool for so I didn't buy it I will buy this one, and I will give it a go, but from Dovetail, I will say this to you, this is what I want you to do for me, is impress me. Impress me. Bring me the content that we need as flight simmers, not gamers. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right, Mr. Kevin. Right. Um, I want a public SDK. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I have no doubt that they are able to bring the platform where the community want, wants it to be because it's already far st a, far, a big step in that direction what they've done is very impressive but the fact that they put microtransaction <laughs> I love that word uh, as a store button in the in the sim is only through Steam is is ludicrous. It's it's just it cannot be that way. It's not realistic for for the community that we have. Um, so we need we need this possibility to create outside of this box on our own with an SDK, a public one, not under <clears throat> not under NDA. Um, if if they are, if they are able to do that, then they have a succeeding platform. I think that would that would have the potential to replace B three D in the long run. Um, if they are able to provide this kind of thing, if they if they don't, then I guess B three D and X plane will will rule rule this planet in a few uh, in a few years time. Mm -hmm. oh, Mr. B, Mr. Brian. Yeah, yeah. Well, I I. Uh... I'm a pretty non-technical flight simmer, and I do like the simplification that's come on the X-Plane interface, and I like what I see on the flight school interface. Says the man with two computers and, like, five fucking displays. <laughs> and three, like, three. Oh, three. You see the three? Yeah. Like, three, <laughs> boy. Is your, microphone, is your microphone okay, Mr. B? <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> Carry on, okay. Mr. B, yeah. sorry. 
and I want uh, I see I'm going to be using multiple flight sims but I'm only going to use one of the Microsoft based ones and the competition I see at the minute is a potentially forthcoming V4 P3D which I know I'm going to put my PMDG aircraft into and all my Orbix scenery is going to go straight into at no charge yeah so therefore that is a great plus for that I know it's not here yet I'm hoping it'll be here soon but for me to even consider long term your uh, dovetail flight sim world I need the same thing because I ain't going to wash down thousands of pounds worth of add-ons down the drain I also want compatibility with my hardware I want the ability to use third-party software to drive my hardware if it's all tied down I can't do that it's a no-go I've got two grand's worth of hardware panels here I'm not throwing that down the pan so that's what I would like to see from Flight Sim World and and that's it that's it cool. to be Mr. Jordan <clears throat> So you wait, so you don't have any comments at the <laughs> <laughs> I'll leave me for last. All right. It's your show, so I'll let you close the door. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, so like I said, um, I don't have any business talking to any of these companies about their businesses. Um, what I can only say is as a consumer, and it's pretty much I'll say the same thing I said in my video. <clears throat> Five years ago, ten years ago, I used to watch the irony of my video, right? Is that like I named it something a little bit clickbaity. It was, you know, Flight Simulator 2017, blah, 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 whatever, right? And and then once again, it's because before you needed Easy Dock and Sony Vegas and all these things to make your sim look this not even this good, in my opinion, to be honest with you. It, given the right angle and the right lighting and all that stuff. So we're finally here and it's not just this sim we've got x-plane that looks better than ever and actually has a usable user interface you've got orbix coming into this aerofly thing which i'm telling you when everybody gets vr um headsets aerofly will change your life in the way that you look at vr and <clears throat> you know everybody's talking about other 64-bit sims that may or may not be coming and then of course there's this flight uh, sim world thing it's a great time but for for our options to be limited before we even really get to explore them because of you know politics and look and, and it's not just dovetail and pmdg don't forget what happened with orbix and explain with austin myers and john and how much of a miss that is now all the explain communities yeah. out there or throwing to explain their asses off instead of just installing goddamn orbix land class like it should be because of what business not even business because of personal <laughs> and petty you know what i'm not even gonna get into this that's <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna try some real serious i mean but let's be honest it was not because of business viability it was a more innate problem than that and i don't want to see that happen again because this community is far too small but we've been so resilient and we've come so far to have this amazing time and, and opportunity in front of us and we're going to squander it because of bullshit. That's what I don't want to see. And that's all I have to say. Yeah, good stuff, man. I applaud that. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, I'm a visuals guy. I like the candy. Show me the eye candy. You know, from what I see already, Dovetail, you're dropping some good stuff. Um, do a little bit better on showcasing what you're bringing to the table. Uh, I want to see uh, a much better presentation of your product. I mean, gosh, you shouldn't. Uh, I shouldn't be impressed by. <laughs> I shouldn't be impressed by uh, you know your, your your testers kind of like showing stuff. I should be impressed by you selling the product. Uh, let the let the business people do the business. Let the creators create. Uh, let the simmers kind of drive the heart of your product, and I think we'll end up in the right place. Um, but understand that uh, this 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 land that we have, uh, this community of simmers, is very delicate. Everybody's going to want what they want, and you'll never be able to please everyone. I mean, that's just kind of a given in, in almost anything. You'll never be able to please anyone. Uh, but but try and and walk around that minefield as, as best as you can, 
and uh, just try and keep everyone in mind. I guess you know, just you, you've got it. You've got to try and be there for the new folks, and you've got to try and be there for the old guard as well. Uh, we're at an interesting time in flight sim right now, where. Uh, like like Jordan said, I mean, we 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 have survived. <laughs> like it's crazy, but this is something that you know could have, perhaps should have died, uh, but it didn't. And it really, uh, a big part of that, we we owe thanks to Dovetail for kind of taking that on and saving it and reinjecting it. I mean, you see these videos on YouTube uh, that that even that even end up trending in in Reddit. You know, like ultimate ATC trolls. LOL, must watch Air Force Pride at the SU. Yeah. Oh. Um, enough, fun and, fact, you know he is the biggest flight simulation guy. He's bigger than Frugal and Matt Davies combined. Yeah, that guy it's, is it's crazy, sure. right? But but see, like that's such an indication of where the market actually is. And Dovetail placed it there. Um, you know, I'm excited to see what this is about. I'm excited to tell people that this is the product that they should buy first if they want to test the waters. And I'm excited to say that I too will be purchasing it, and I, that I hope that it may be something that I keep on my machine installed as well. So it's all very exciting, and you know, until it's out and in all of our hands, and we all get a chance to see it, we won't really know. Uh, we can only hope that uh, you know some deals get made, and that the eye candy keeps coming. Um, it all sounds like really good stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. Thanks, guys, for your time. Uh, everyone, thank you for joining uh, tonight. Mr. Jordan, thank you for stopping in, sir. It was uh, an absolute pleasure having you here. I'm going to get kicked off of every beta team I was ever on. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> but you Honestly, could, it's policy. But you could say you're on, our, on approach now. I know. At least <laughs> let me stay in. Uh, at least let me stay. You're YouTube famous, right? The chase plane. <laughs> yeah, you're, yeah, you're staying on the alpha. That's not I'll the stay alpha. on the alpha. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for tuning in, and uh, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. <laughs> 63, climb in, 1-3-3. 1-3-3, contact the New York Center, 128.3. 183, just listen.